Okay, as requested um, by Amy, uh, we'll have a little look at water potential. You should know the definition for osmosis um, off by heart. You should just know what it is. If you're not sure on it, you, you're not quite clear, make sure you learn it. It's the movement or the diffusion of water molecules from a high to a low water potential through a partially permeable membrane. Now notice it's not semi-permeable, do not put semi-permeable. Um, semi means half and cell surface membranes, which are what we're usually talking about when we're talking about these membranes, um, are not semi-permeable. They don't let half the things do and half not. They're partially permeable. They let some things through based on size and um, charge and if they're lipids or not. All the basic stuff on membranes. However, do not use semi-permeable. That's my point. Okay. Now, there are a couple of ways to, to think of um, this, really. Every time we have a cell, there is going to be stuff dissolved in it, solutes. So whether those solutes are, um, it could be ions, like um, sodium, for example. It could be dissolved substances like glucose. Let's get that G. Cells are absolutely packed full of these things. And being surrounded by fluid, cell fluid, um, which is also charges on the ocean, um, which also contain dissolved um, solutes. Okay. Now these things don't float around in, in the air, of course, there's also water out here. So what we have is a situation where we're continually swapping substances from one place to another. If you remember the, the, the purpose, or one of the purposes of a, a membrane, whether it's a cell surface membrane or inside the cell, is to put things into compartments, to compartmentalise things. So having a membrane in the way allows us some kind of control over what goes in and out. So in this situation I've got more glucose inside than outside, so I might expect glucose to be um, diffusing in. Uh, in this case I've got a bit more sodium on the outside the inside as well, I might expect sodium to be dissolving in. Uh, excuse me, diffusing in. Okay, that's fine. You know, usually the diffusion bit's okay. But what we forget is that these things are also dissolved in a solvent. And the solvent in this case, of course, is water. And the water will also diffuse. Except we don't say that water diffuses generally. We talk about osmosis. Okay, so osmosis is a particular case of water diffusing. Um, if I use um, some little counters for a second, maybe just to illustrate this. And my blue is going to represent water, why not? If I put something, a, a solute into here, there we go. If I put a solute in, what happens when something dissolves is water will actually, the water molecules will form weak bonds with the solute. They will attach themselves. Okay? So what this means here is now there are less free water molecules knocking around than there were before because some of them have now attached themselves to these solute form these weak bonds. So there's less free water molecules, or fewer, sorry, uh, free water molecules. So, in the case of cell, and I'm just going to draw some little circles, so here's sodium for example, three sodium on the inside, there is water in there as well. These sodium ions will have water molecules attached to them, as well as the free water. Now, if I put this cell into, for example, a pure water, there are lots of free water molecules on the outside and less free water on the inside. We would describe the outside as having a higher water potential than the inside. There's potentially more water, if you like, that can move on the outside than the inside. And what the water will do is it will move in. Okay. So if you like, another way to put this, another way to think of it, is that in osmosis, water moves from the more dilute to a more concentrated solution. Wherever there's the most free water, where there's no solute dissolved in it, water will move from that place. So in the case of cells, it will move in that, uh, that direction. If we reverse this for a second, and this time we have, let's just redraw this, I'll put the same amount of sodium in, 
and this time I put it into a I put it into a liquid that is at a high solute concentration, perhaps salt water, seawater if you like. So let's just sorry, these molecules. Comparatively speaking, there are comparatively more free water molecules inside than outside. There are less more water molecules attached on the inside than the outside. So water will tend to move outwards. This time there is a higher water potential inside than outside. Okay, again, or if you want to think of it this way, it's going from a more dilute to a more concentrated solution. And this is, I think, where the problem comes. People can work out in terms of which bits are the most salty, um, but they for, or most concentrated in terms of solute, but they forget that the water will also be moving, it'll be moving in the direction. Okay, the confusing part, I think, is that pure water, or one of the confusing parts, uh, is given a value of zero. It's measured in uh, kilopascals, usually you'll see it. So the water potential of pure water uh, is zero, and by adding solute, you make the liquid, you make the solution more negative. So if I added a solute, this might go down to minus 100 kilopascals. And typical kind of question to be given, here's a couple of cells uh, in contact with each other. And cell A, let's have uh, minus 50 kilopascals, and cell B, minus 200 kilopascals. Which way will the water move? Well, remember it goes from the higher water potential to a lower water potential. Minus 50 is a higher number than minus 200. So the water would actually flow in that direction. If I got a cell with an even lower water potential, uh, minus, I don't know, let's just make up minus 570 for example, I've got a bigger diffusion gradient, so I'd get even more water flowing in that direction. Okay. Perhaps if it helps, if you're not convinced to remember this, when you go into the exam, first thing to do is just to write down zero and it doesn't matter, minus 100. Just write it on the side, but before you even answer any questions, that way you can always think zero is the top. Um, and you know, if you've got this kind of question, you could write it down with well, minus 200 is below 100, minus 570 is even lower. Water goes from the higher to the lower concentra uh, lower water potential. So that's a, a, a trick, if you like, to help you remember it. Just write down a bit of a number line, first of all, if you're not convinced. Um, finally, we should just mention what happens to these cells. If you put an animal cell into a concentrated solution, so there is more um, salt on the outside than the inside, it will tend to lose water and a poor little animal cell, because it's losing water, will shrivel. This is called crenating. It's got this wrinkled appearance, it crenates. If, however, you put it into a liquid that is less concentrated, for example, pure water, water will move in and the cell will burst. You often get this um, applied to red blood cells, and this term hemolyze, bursting of a, a red blood cell, doesn't mean it applies to every single cell that bursts. Remember, it's heme, as in the hemoglobin. Um, it's referring to uh, the red blood cell. Plant cells, slightly different. If you put a plant cell in a very concentrated solution, well, that's what the cell wall's there for. It prevents it... Um, sorry. <laughs> Around it. If we put a plant cell into a, a highly concentrated solution, the water will still move out and we'll get this cell membrane, that, a bit like the crenation, it peels away from the cell wall. Notice the cell wall doesn't move, it's a nice um, rigid cellulose wall. We would say that the cell in that case has become plasmalized. The plasma membrane has split, lysed away from the cell wall. If, however, you put it into um, a lower concentrated solution, water will flood into the cell and 
the cell membrane you generally wouldn't see it be pushed right up against the cell wall and the cell wall here is, is providing a bit of mechanical stability it's preventing it from bursting that's what the cell wall does um, and we could refer to this plant cell then as turgid uh, and this is actually important for plant cells that they maintain this um, nice rigid shape this is what holds them upright so remember this idea the highest water potential is zero water will flow from a high to a low water potential and also this idea if you like the other way to think of it is that water will go from a more dilute to a more concentrated solution if that helps you think about it